So if you guys have ever watched any of my other videos regarding the M&P 2.0 and 2.0 Compact, I've always said I would love to have a minimalist magwell because I do have a holster that I can use um, for concealed carry with these guys. And I haven't been able to find one. You know, there are a lot of companies that are making magwells, but nobody was making anything that was like concealable or more low profile. So these are from Floyd's Custom Shop. They reached out to me and I didn't even see the email for months. And then I finally, you know, saw the email. Now these custom base plates are really awesome. We'll take a look at all this up close here in a bit. Let's test it and see, make sure that everything functions right. Because sometimes when you get different base plates, it can kind of mess with your reliability. So let's see how it goes. We're going to try it on the MMP 2.0 compact first. Then we'll try it on the full size and they also make a mag extension for it. So we're going to be testing that. So you can see I put it in there. It really fits in nicely, has a very nice profile going on and it is nice and sleek along the sides here. It is actually quite narrow and which is the main part that I was concerned with when it comes to carry. So let's see how it functions. All right, that one was 100% reliable. Let's try the full size one. Now on their full size one, I do have their, uh, I believe this is a plus two or plus three mag extension, as well as one with their just standard base plate. So let's test the reliability of this one with just the base plate. Then we're gonna try it with the mag extension and see what happens. So that one ran pretty nicely. Very easy to control these things. I can't express enough how much I love the MMP 2.0s, especially with the Apex trigger. But this magwell just makes it so much easier to hang on to by giving you a little bit of a lip underneath here. So let's try it with our mag extension. As long as this one runs great, we're gonna just take a look at this stuff up close so you can see it. There are a few things that you should know about this before you go out and buy it. So let's see if this one works. I thought I heard a car pulling in, but that was just the echo of the gunshots. So let's take a look at these up close and see what we see. Over the past year, year and a half now, we've been customizing the M&P 2.0 full size, as well as this compact model. We'll go over what all I've done to these guns here in a minute so you guys can see, you know, what all's been done to these and if it's something that you want to get. When we first started, we got the MP 2.0 full size right here. I went ahead and did the Apex flat face trigger because it will change your life. I will show you what I mean when we dive up close in a few minutes. I also had the slide milled by my buddy over at Maple Leaf Firearms and it was Cerakoted by Carl at Legion Precision and he actually named this Toolbox Camo. Kind of funny, huh? Um, um, you won't be able to get the slide work though because Maple Leaf Firearms did stop working on it. After that, I got the Texas Black Rifle Company compensator on there and then I got a set of Trijicon HD XR night sights. On the MMP 2.0 Compact, I really haven't done that much to it. I got the Apex Freedom Flatty in there, the Fax and Firearms Barrel. I got the uh, XS F8 sights on there. We got this compensator that we're gonna be talking about today on there. Oh, I forgot to mention, I got the True Precision Barrel in here as well. But the one thing that I just wanted to get for both of these guns, magwells. And not just any magwell. I've been looking for a minimalist magwell for a very long time. There are tons of magwells for the MMP and the MMP 2.0, but they're always large. They're mainly competition magwells. And then if they do call it a minimalist magwell, it's still way too big. Well, I finally found them from a place called Floyd's Custom Shop. They actually reached out to me and said, hey, we got minimalist magwells after they saw my previous video about it. And they sent them to me. And I gotta say, they're kind of interesting, but there are some things you need to know about these before you just head over to their website and pick them up. I will have links below for these magwells as well as their other parts. And I'll also link up the Apex triggers and stuff. I have coupon codes for all that. But let's just dive up close. Let's take a look at these. Let's see if they perform well or not. Then we're gonna, gonna go over my final impressions of them. So these are some mods that I've actually been waiting for for quite a long time. Like I mentioned earlier, we have finally found minimalist magwells for the M&P 2.0 series. We got the 2.0 compact and the 2.0 full size over here. And as always guys, there's always pros and cons to anything. So we'll definitely be covering that. So first, 
Let's talk about the 2.0 Compact. So this one, I actually have it set up with a holster and we're, we're gonna see here in a little bit if these magwells make it print any more than they already do. So we'll test that out here in a little bit, but I actually have this one set up for everyday carry. I have carried this one quite a lot. It's definitely my favorite of the two because the compacts come with uh, extended magazines with sleeves so you can actually have a full size grip. Only a quarter inch difference between the slides. Not a huge deal. As always, there will be links down in the description below to pick up any of the stuff that we're talking about right here. And if you haven't seen the previous videos on the MP 2.0s, I'll put a link to that playlist down below so you can go check that out as well. But if you only get one mod on this, you definitely have to get the trigger. It is just, let me show you. Take up, break. Take up, break. Aside from the magwells, we also have some base pads over here as well as an extension from them because you have to use these base pads or you need to modify the base pads that you currently have so you can actually use them. We also have a compensator from them which we will talk a little bit more about here in a little bit. Essentially what these do is they replace that little tool that you have in the butt of the grip on the MMPs. So you pull that tool out this goes into place and then you lock it down with a flathead and you can actually see I was using a flathead that was a little bit too small and I actually accidentally boogered this one up a little bit. So I need to sand that down and get those burrs off of it. But that's how it works. And then you can see right here, it's beautiful. I mean, you got a nice little lip on the front, which is what everybody loves. But on the sides, it's not too wide. It's wide enough to give you a nice proper grip. This front lip does is it gives you a little bit more upward pressure against your trigger guard so you can get a higher grip on here and thus get more accurate shots as well as being able to reduce muzzle flip. Over here, this is the full-size MMP 2.0 that we started a little over a year ago. The slide was actually machined by Maple Leaf Firearms. However, he's not doing MMPs anymore, so you won't be able to get this slide cut from him. But again, with this one, I have the Apex flat face trigger shoe in here. I love this trigger. Look at that. Got the uh, True Precision barrel in this one. And on this one, we have the Faxon Firearms barrel. I actually wanted to make a really quick announcement because I made a mistake in a previous video regarding these barrels. I believe it was in the Faxon video. I was comparing it to the Apex match grade barrel and Apex has a proprietary design that eliminates one of the flaws they had with the 1.0s. The 2.0s, um, it's the flaw isn't as prevalent. But basically there was this flaw called early unlocking where your barrel would essentially, the chamber would drop before the round was completely exited. They noticed a lot of shifting where the bullets would be hitting. So they fixed that. Well, I had announced, I had said in the Faxon video that the Faxon barrels seemed to prevent the early unlocking. However, I was mistaken. And the reason that was right here, this hood up here was just fitting so tightly that it didn't appear to have early unlocking. However, after further testing and more rounds through it, it does in fact have the early unlocking. The only barrel that doesn't is the Apex. So I just wanted to kind of clear the air on that. So with these magwells though, you're either gonna have to get a grinder out or a file and modify your base plate or get one of their base plates. Um, this one's actually an aftermarket mag that I picked up. It's virtually identical though to the OEMs. Now to show you a couple of things that aren't compatible, this is my spare magazine that I carry with the MMP 2.0 Compact, or I can just take this sleeve off that comes with it and use it as my primary magazine. The downside is if you do get this uh, mag extension, at least on the compacts, you won't be able to use those sleeves anymore. Another thing I wanted to show you, these plates here will not seat. It's the way that these are designed, so don't try that. So here's the difference between the base plates here. You can always see that huge front lip on the MMP mags. These essentially eliminate that. And when it goes into here, it fits nice and secure and it looks very good and very clean actually. Very nicely done. The logo is very tasteful. It's not too blaring. And then no issues there. Same thing on the MMP 2.0 Compact. No issues there. Like I said, we'll be testing the concealability of this here in a minute. Now, another thing that they do make with these is these mag extensions. I believe this one's a plus two or plus three and they attach, they have a really cool attachment system. It's essentially this little metal bar that goes across it 
and it's held in place with two Allen heads. This is a raw unfinished mag extension, so that's why it looks like it does, but all of his mag extensions come in an anodized finish in multiple different colors. But I wanted to show you that it will fit right in there with these mag wells. Now, one question I'm sure some of you are gonna have is, well, what if I have the Terran Tactical one? Um, right here, I have a Terran Tactical mag extension and it fits as well. So this is the only other mag extension that I have and that I can test. So I can't really say if all of them will work, but I do know for a fact that if you have Terran Tacticals, these are the Brownells exclusives, they will work with it as well. Let's talk about their compensator real quick. And here in a bit, we're gonna go over the range footage to see how this functions. It's a pretty large compensator in the grand scheme of things. I mean, right here we have the Texas Black Rifle. You guys can definitely see the difference. Because this one has a lot larger ports and a lot more ports, it's going to compensate a little bit better. However, that always comes with the risk of having to run a lower powered spring which we'll cover more in depth here in a second okay so there's that on the MP 2.0 compact you can get a view of it from the top right here and then just for kicks and giggles let me show you the Texas Black Rifle one. Now I'm probably gonna go out on a limb and say that this compensator on the left from Floyd's Custom Shop is probably more geared for those who wanna just have fun at the range or are a competition shooter. You can see on the left here that this compensator on the compact makes it longer than the Texas Black Rifle compensator on the full size. So just keep that in mind. It might not be ideal for carry due to the size, but let's jump up top real quick. And I wanna talk about how this compensator functioned and how all the magazine extensions and everything functioned at the range. So back up top. Now you're probably thinking, well, bro, why would I buy a magwell if I gotta buy a different base plate? Well, there's two main reasons. Reason number one, these base plates add two extra rounds to the capacity of your magazine, as well as being very flush fit. You know, like you saw up close, they sit very, very flush and very, very nicely to the gun. But let's see how they conceal on your body. Now, this holster is theoretically made for an APLC, but it'll work for today's demonstration. This is the Lost Concealment holster. I've done a review on this one a long time ago. Um, I'll put a link below for these guys as well. But let's see how it conceals real quick with this in place. Now I'm just gonna stand normally. I'm not gonna raise my arms because nobody walks around with their hands up. It does stick out just a little bit here, but it already did that anyway, but it might just stick out just a little bit more. But not too bad considering I'm wearing nothing but a t-shirt and shorts. What do you guys think? And then here it is, you know, if you need it, you got it there and you can press out. Funny thing about this holster, every time I made a video about these holsters, everyone always corrects me. It's like, it's LAS concealment. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I'm not gonna say LAS because I wouldn't call NASA NASA. That just doesn't make sense. If there's a vowel between two predicates, you typically just pronounce that. Rant over. So they function really well, plus they add two rounds of capacity. The next reason why this is totally worth the money is these magwells are literally half the price. Glock magwells are always about $100, but you can get the magwell as well as the plus two base plate for I think 80 bucks depending if we have a coupon code or not check down in the description see if there's a code or not um, if there's not that's because I didn't get one if there is hey save some money you know so that works really well now interestingly enough I did test it on an aftermarket magazine for the Smith & Wesson MMP and the main difference is with this one it has the rounds on the back whereas the standard has them on the side I don't remember what brands these are but my buddies at the mag shack sent it to me and just check down below for all that good stuff. That one ran without a hitch as well. Honestly, with the magwells and their base extensions and base plates, they run really good. I honestly can't find a con about them. Now let's talk about the compensator. Depends on what you wanna use it for. If you're gonna be using this for a competition gun, then it is a badass compensator. If you're gonna be using it for concealed carry or duty carry, do not recommend it. Main reason is you gotta use an 11 pound guide rod spring. I can't, I think it's an 11 pound or a 13 pound, one of the two. Right now, I actually put a 15 pound spring in here and this is how the gun cycled.
So you can see that it cycled really well. The only downside was it would never lock open on the last round. And that's something that's super important to me. And I can only imagine it's probably super important to you as well, that your gun does everything that it should do with the right parts. And I've just kind of had wonky luck with light and guide rod springs in general, unless they actually came with the gun, like on the FN 509 Tactical. So if you are in doing competitions and you want to run a low recoil gun that shoots super fast and flat, Definitely recommend these for concealed carry. Absolutely not. If you're going to do concealed carry, 100% get the TBRC comp. I've been using testing this one for over a year and it runs 100% reliably with the OEM guide rod springs. So what do you guys think of this Magwell right here? Would you use it on your MNP? Maybe, maybe not. Let me know down in the comments section below. But all I can say is this, everything has ran great and has ran exactly the way that the company described that it would run on their website. You know, so for example, they did say that this one is going to need a light and guide rod spring. So it wasn't like they said, oh, it runs with an OEM spring and then I got it and then it didn't. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below. But until next time, I love you and you guys stay sexy.